This video explains the performance of the Brain Simulator's spiking neuron engine and compares it with the computation that goes on in your brain and with a more typical artificial neural network. To stress the system, I created a network with 10 million neurons and 500 random synapses per neuron, making a total of 5 billion synapses. Allocating this network takes about 100 gigabytes of RAM and 30 seconds. In this example, the simulator can fire every neuron and process every synapse in less than 2 seconds for a rate of 2.5 billion synapses per second. I hope you'll try this out and report results from your computer. Instructions are at the end of this video. To put this in context, let me provide a little background on how your brain works and how it compares with the spiking neuron engine in the brain simulator and it with a typical artificial neural network. In your brain and in a spiking neuron engine, when a neuron fires, its synapse transfer small charges to every neuron they are connected to. We call this amount of transferred charge the weight of the synapse, and it could be positive or negative. When the target neuron accumulates enough charge, it fires itself, and the process repeats. Very simplified, the spiking algorithm looks like this. In a nutshell, if the current charge of a neuron exceeds a threshold, then it processes each synapse by adding its weight to each of the neurons it is connected to. We don't have to multiply by the neuron's value because the value of a spike is defined as 1. Finally, the neuron's charge is set to 0 so the process can repeat. The key to a spiking simulation is that significant computation, shown in orange, is only required when a neuron fires. Unlike a typical neural network, which calculates every neuron in every cycle, whether the neuron fires or not. Comparing with the human brain, the thinking part, or neocortex, contains 16 billion neurons, but on average they don't fire very often. Energy analysis shows that only 2.5 billion neurons fire each second. If we consider the basic time interval for a neural network to be one millisecond, the spiking simulator can be 6,000 times more efficient than the neural network because it only processes neurons which fire. Let's compare your brain, a spiking neuron engine, and an artificial neural network in a number of other areas. In your brain, and in the spiking neuron simulator, synapses can potentially connect any pair of neurons and are not arranged in fully interconnected layers. In a typical neural network, layers are fully interconnected and synapses only connect from one layer to the next. This means that in your brain and in the neuron engine, neurons can have radically different numbers of synapses, whereas in a neural network, all the neurons in a layer have a fixed number of synapses. So, in the spiking neuron engine, we address synapses as a sparse array of connections. In your brain, synapses can physically move, but this is a very slow process, necessary for brain development, and is too slow for thinking. In the neuron engine, synapses can be added, removed, or retargeted at any time. In the neural network, synapses can't be moved, only their weights can change. In your brain, all the synapse processing is fully parallel. In the neuron engine, greatest performance comes from a multi-core CPU. Because of its flexibility, the neuron engine would be less efficient on GPUs used by many neural networks because high GPU efficiency relies on fixed arrays. From a computational perspective, the number of synapses is large relative to the number of neurons. 
so the computational requirement goes up linearly with the number of synapses. The lion's share of the computation is used by these few lines of code. The neuron engine's current computational speed is limited by RAM contention, which you can see from this performance profiler display. That is, with many CPU cores all trying to add to neuron values, the cores have to wait in line for access to RAM where the target neuron values are stored. You can see in the performance profiler that these two lines of code account for 89% of the computation time. It's not because the instructions are complex, it's because these are the instructions where the CPU has to wait for the RAM bottleneck. This means that adding CPU cores above 16 provides only a modest performance improvement and above 32 is irrelevant for this implementation. It also means that the calculation of the neuron and synapse values can be significantly more sophisticated without impacting the performance of the neuron engine. For example, a few lines higher, the vector lock, which allows synapses to be modified while the engine is processing, has only a 0.03% impact on performance. Instead of waiting for RAM, the CPU could use these cycles to calculate exponential leakage or other more complex neuron functionality. Interestingly, the distance to a synapse target does impact performance. The closer the target neurons are, the more likely they are to be in the CPU cache. This eliminates RAM cycles, so performance improves. Let me know what performance you get on your computer. Download the source code from httbrainsim.org and try it out. The fully C++ program is called CPP Engine Test, and it is currently set to 100 million synapses, so it requires only 2 GB of RAM and can run on many machines. I would also appreciate it if you like, subscribe, share, and comment about this video. And once again, thanks for watching.